Welcome to the fifth and sixth presentations of Meditation for Extremely Busy People. All forms of change, whether they are physical, mental or spiritual, require an input of power. In the fifth presentation, Sister Genty and Mike explain how we can access that power and use it effectively. As you've probably noticed, everything we have talked about so far points towards some kind of personal change. First, change on the inside to your personal identity and self-awareness. And second, on the outside to your behaviour and your interactions with others. You may already be experiencing some major shifts in your understanding of some of those natural laws of living. And you may now be seeing your purpose more clearly. And perhaps a vision of a whole new future is beginning to make itself known. The underlying method to see all these things is of course meditation, or periods of inward focused contemplation. That's why the inner exercise of meditation is an essential daily exercise. It ensures your outer actions during the day are focused in the right direction. Now, you may not want to change the direction of your life, and it's certainly not compulsory, but I'm sure you've identified some things you would like to change, perhaps within your own personality or behaviours. All forms of change at every level of life, be they physical, mental or spiritual, require energy or some form of input of power. To change the level of physical illumination in a room, you have to switch on the light. The light bulb requires an input of energy, probably from a power station many miles away. <laughs> we tend to take power stations for granted. It's exactly the same when we come to increase the level of illumination within our own being. In this context, illumination simply means increase self-awareness or depth of understanding. At some point in most of our lives, we each recognize the need for an input of some energy to stimulate inner change within our being or within our behaviors. And like the bulb illuminates the room, we need some power to illuminate our perceptions, clarify that sense of personal identity, and perhaps even challenge some of those deeply held beliefs. Essentially, there are three sources of energy or power input. The first is from other people. When things get so bad, the stress or tension gets so high, we may go and see a specialist. This may be a therapist or a psychologist or somebody with a, a specialist knowledge. Or we may seek advice from someone older and wiser. Energy input in this context comes in the form of their experience, their beliefs, their perceptions, perhaps even just their enthusiasm. But we have to be careful here, because if their energy is tainted in any way, with wrong understanding, wrong beliefs, inaccurate insight, distorted perception, then those will be the energies which we consume from them, and they in turn will negatively affect us. Although it may seem positive and okay at the time, they can ultimately send us down the wrong path and into further confusion. This happens a lot today and the bookshelves in our personal development sections in our bookstores encourage our supermarket attitude and our behaviour to our emotional and spiritual ailments. I personally feel this consumption of energy in the form of theory or advice from others can be a risk. Everyone has made that same basic mistake, which is self-forgetfulness, over-identification with our roles, and attachment to our possessions. And that means that everyone carries and communicates some form of fear. And it's easy to absorb the fears and hurts of others as we consume their ideas and their emotions in our interactions with them. Sample complete. Ready to continue?